You may have noticed that it's been really difficult to buy a new Sony PlayStation 5 or Microsoft's new Xbox. Or it might be that your favorite TV, laptop, or tablet aren't available in stores. Now, there are many factors for why this is happening, but a major reason is that the world is suffering from a critical shortage of semiconductors. In simple terms, semiconductors, which are also known as microchips or integrated circuits, are tiny slices of silicon with millions, sometimes billions of transistors. The transistors themselves control the movement of electrons, allowing the chip to process information. Altogether, a semiconductor chip is responsible for the computations that enable all of our electronic devices to work. Before 1947, computing relied on slow, bulky vacuum tubes, but making semiconductors out of silicon changed the world. It meant that you could make transistors small enough to fit on a microchip, and they've gotten smaller and smarter, and consequently serve the electronic devices that we've all been using. This might sound positive, but now the world is facing a major shortfall. While we know microchips are used in our gadgets, the issue is further reaching than you might think. It's also causing issues for auto manufacturers. You may want to buy that fancy new car, while you might have issues getting one from one of these companies, who have all reportedly been forced to suspend or reduce production at various times because the chips that run their car's electronics are in short supply. So what's causing this so-called semiconductor crisis? One perennial issue is that there's a limited number of companies around the world that have the ability to manufacture the silicon wafers needed. And older factories sometimes find it harder to upgrade their production lines to keep up with advances in new technology. Another problem is the proliferation of chips in products that didn't use them before. The chip demand for increasingly sophisticated products that once had fewer chips or used less sophisticated chips is always increasing. Cars, for example have gone from having a very basic onboard computer to electric vehicles which have become computers on wheels. This creates stress on an industry which never needed to provide cutting edge components for fridges and toasters. And then there's the issue which is affecting everyone, COVID-19. There have been chip shortages before, but the pandemic has put huge stress on global supply chains. And with more of us working from home, we've also become even more reliant on tech devices and global demand for them has remained extremely high. New coronavirus outbreaks in Asia could create further issues over semiconductor supplies. Taiwan, which had been dealing with the pandemic fairly well, has recently seen an uptick in infections. The self ruled island is a significant hub for chip production. And it's not been helped by the fact that in June, 200 employees tested positive at leading manufacturer King Yuan Electronics, while a further 2,000 were put in quarantine. The Wall Street Journal reported that lockdowns in Malaysia, which is also home to various companies that do assembly and testing of chips, could have their output reduced by 15 to 40 percent. You also have geopolitical tensions. China was slammed with technology export restrictions by the US during the Trump presidency. Important chip player, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp, along with other companies, were targeted. This is significant because the means to make high-end computer chips is heavily reliant on American technology. The US-China trade war has already put pressure on China's semiconductor industry, but in response, Beijing has made efforts to lessen the country's reliance on US tech. Now, it's led to a proliferation of chip-related companies and an emphasis on local supply. Huawei, for example, actually stockpiled chips before US sanctions came into force to ensure business continuity. Other companies have also resorted to growing their stockpiles of chips to see out the chip drought, but that makes it harder for other companies to find them. So how might companies be able to cope with this shortage? Well, according to consultancy firm McKinsey, the semiconductor shortage won't be resolved anytime soon. Due to the complexity of making chips and the increasingly sophisticated silicon needed for cars, especially in electronic vehicles. 
Instead, they suggest that companies will need to reevaluate the way they structure contracts on semiconductor sourcing, look more at regional sourcing, and perhaps invest in firming up supply chains. The European Commission has taken regional sourcing seriously, and has said it wants to build up chip manufacturing to become more self-reliant. Now, the semiconductor shortage isn't going away. Gartner analysts said in May that it could last until the second quarter of 2022. It still very much remains to be seen how countries and companies alike will be able to meet our seemingly insatiable demand for tech in all aspects of our lives. Oh, no.